Hello there. In this video, I'll present the Leighton Macaulay Signature Scheme, which combines the WinterNet's one-time signature scheme with Merkle trees and some additional optimizations to enhance security. I'll also present HSS, the HyperTree variant of LMS, and XMSS, another stateful hash-based signature scheme that's very similar to LMS. The Leighton Macaulay Signature Scheme LMS is a hash-based signature scheme standardized by the IETF in 2019. IETF's RFC 8554 fully describes LMS. This includes the Leighton Macaulay one-time signature scheme, LMS itself, which combines the one-time signature scheme with Merkle trees, and HSS, a hypertree version of LMS. LMS was also adopted as a NIST standard in 2020. NIST's SB800-208 provides some parameter sets for LMS. XMSS, the Extendable Merkle Signature Scheme, is another hash-based signature scheme that has been standardized by the IETF and by NIST. XMSS is very similar to LMS. The Leighton Macaulay One-Time Signature Scheme is essentially a modified version of WinterNet's OTS. It uses the same parameters as WinterNet's. H is an n-bit hash function. For concreteness, we'll take H to be SHA-256, so n is 256. In SP800-208, the WinterNet's parameter W is restricted to values 1, 2, 4, or 8. This means that hash chains have length 1, 3, 15, or 255, respectively. L1 denotes the number of W-bit blocks in a hash value. L2 denotes the number of W-bit blocks needed for a checksum. Recall that the checksum of a hash value H is defined to be the sum of the terms 2 to the power W minus 1 minus HI, where the HI are the W-bit blocks of H. Finally, the total number of hash chains is denoted by L. L is the sum of L1 and L2. Here are the key differences between LMOTS and the WinterNet's OTS. First, the public key in LMOTS consists of the hash of the final hash chain values Y0, Y1, up to YL-1. Since these final hash chain values can be derived from any signed message, the signature verifier can always reconstruct the public key K during signature verification. Second, LMOTS uses a single n-bit hash function H, which is also shared with LMS and HSS. A third difference is the use of unique prefixes in hashing operations to support security proofs. These prefixes ensure that each hash function invocation remains independent. The prefix includes a randomly selected 32-byte identifier string I of the Merkle tree associated with the LMOTS instance, a 4-byte number Q that identifies the Merkle tree's leaf associated with the LMS OTS instance, the index I of the W-bit block HI within the message chain or checksum, the position J in a WinterNet's hash chain, and a 2-byte constant, shown here in hexadecimal, used to compute the public key K or for message hashing. The fourth key difference between LMOTS and the WinterNet's OTS is that a randomly generated 256-bit string C is appended to the message M before hashing. C is called the message randomizer. This randomizer is included with the signature because it's needed for signature verification. The use of a message randomizer eliminates the requirement that H be collision resistant, since C is randomly chosen by the signer each time they sign a message. Here is a full description of the Leighton Macaulay one-time signature scheme. I'll begin with key generation. 
Alice selects L random n bit strings xi. For each xi, she computes a hash chain of length 2 to the w minus 1, starting at xi and ending at yi. She computes the hash k of the yi's. Alice's private key is a list of the xi's, while her public key is k. To sign the message m, Alice selects a message randomizer c and hashes it together with m. The w-bit blocks of the resulting hash value h are denoted h0, h1, up to h l1 minus 1. She computes the checksum of h and the w-bit blocks of its binary representation. These blocks are denoted hl1, hl1 plus 1, up to h l minus 1. Then for each w-bit block hi, Alice computes the value si on the ith hash chain that is distance hi from the starting value xi. Alice's signature on m consists of the randomizer c and the list of si values. To verify Alice's signed message, Bob hashes c together with m, computes the checksum of the hash value h, and forms the w-bit blocks hi of h and its checksum. Then, for each w-bit block hi, he computes the value yi primed on the ith hash chain that is distance 2 to the power w minus 1 minus hi from si. Finally, he computes the hash k primed of the yi primed values and accepts a signature if and only if k prime matches Alice's public key k. LMS uses a Merkle tree of height d, whose leaves are associated with LMS OTS public keys k0, k1, up to k 2d minus 1, so a total of 2 to the d OTS keys. SP800208 permits trees of heights 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. All private keys are generated from a 256-bit random secret seed. Specifically, the ith component of the private key associated with the leaf-numbered Q is obtained by hashing the tree identifier i, the leaf identifier Q, the index i of the hash chain, the constant ff, and the secret seed. The nodes of a Merkle tree are numbered sequentially from left to right and top to bottom. So the root is assigned number 1. The left child of a node i is assigned number 2i. And the right child of node i is assigned number 2i plus 1. Thus, the leaves of a height d tree are numbered from 2 to the d to 2 to the d plus 1 minus 1. The hash value ti held in the leaf numbered i is computed by hashing the tree identifier i, the leaf node number i, the two byte constant 8282, and the OTS public key indexed by i minus 2 to the d. The hash value ti held by an internal node numbered i is derived by hashing the tree identifier i, the leaf node number i, the two byte constant 8383, and the values of the two children, namely t2i and t2i plus 1. The long term public key for the Merkle tree is the root hash value t1. The enhancements introduced by Leighton and Macaulay to their signature scheme, including the use of unique prefixes for all hashed data, enables a formal security analysis of LMS. In 2016, Katz proved that LMS is secure in the random oracle model where the hash function h is treated as a public, randomly selected function. Later, in 2018, Eaton proved LMS secure in the quantum random oracle model where adversaries can make queries in superposition to h. This provides assurance against certain kinds of attacks that might be plausible in the world of quantum computers. The hierarchical signature scheme HSS 
is the hypertree variant of LMS. HSS is fully described in IETF's RFC 8554. It's also part of NIST's SB800-208 standard, which allows hypertrees with as many as eight layers. Use cases for HSS include scenarios where an entity anticipates signing a large number of messages during the lifetime of their long-term public key. Or if the entity needs to delegate signing privileges to two or more cryptographic modules while reducing the risk of OTS private key reuse. XMSS is another standardized hash-based signature scheme that is very similar to LMS. Like LMS, XMSS is built on the Winternet's OTS and employs Merkle trees. The main difference between XMSS and LMS is the use in XMSS of bitmasks, which are XOR with hash function inputs. These bitmasks enable security proofs for XMSS without needing to model the hash function as a random oracle. The hypertree variant of XMSS is called XMSS multitree. Both XMSS and XMSS multitree are fully detailed in IETF's RFC 8391. Additional parameter sets are provided in NIST's SB800-208 standard. LMS and XMSS are classified as stateful signature schemes. The signer must exercise great caution to avoid reusing any of their OTS private keys associated with their long-term public keys. To enforce this requirement, the signer could keep track of a counter or index that increments after each message is signed. This type of data is called state. However, maintaining state securely in practice can be challenging. For example, if a system crashes and is restored to an earlier state, then an OTS private key might be reused and security would be compromised. So stateful signature schemes are only suitable for applications where state can be reliably managed, for example, to authenticate software updates where signing is quite infrequent. In the next video, we'll explore the core concepts behind Sphinx Plus, a hash-based signature scheme that is stateless. Sphinx Plus has been standardized by NIST as part of their post-quantum standardization efforts.